Hi folks, today I'd like to show you some new features that are coming to MapForge uh, version 1.0.9. Um, the first feature is the randomization of items that you stamp down or whatever asset you're working with, tiles or items or tile overlays. And in prior releases, the way you had to map was you'd stamp something down then maybe you'd switch to the next variant, stamp it down, switch to the next one, stamp it down, and so on. And that was more time consuming than it, than it needed to be. So now, by holding down the R key, R for randomize, every time you stamp you're going to get a randomized tile from that collection, the, the variants that are shown at the bottom of the screen. And that works both with the stamp tool and also with the bucket fill tool. I'm going to hold down the R key, fill in this area, and as you can see the tiles have all been randomized. The next feature I'd like to show you is called background image. You can find that in the options menu and selecting that brings you to this screen where you can set your background image. Now first I want to show you I've got a an image I downloaded here. Uh, this could be a sketch I made myself or something I downloaded from the internet uh, or a scan from a, an old D&D module. Whatever it is I want to recreate maybe in higher resolution or in full color or whatever in MapForge I can bring it in and use it as a guide for making my map. So the first thing you'd want to do is click on Set Background Image and select the map you want. Okay, zoom out a bit here so you can see it. And before I show you the rest, I'm going to need to change my grid color to show up on this white paper, something that may be a dark color. Because the first thing I want to do is align it to the MapForge grid. So we'll go back into background image and there are controls on here for shifting the image left, right, up, down, uh, and how much it gets shifted depends on uh, if you press any modifier keys. You can press the control key to move things like a whole cell at a time. Uh, shift control is half a cell at a time and so on. So you can get very granular control down to like a pixel at a time. Uh, and that's the same with the scale buttons too. So I'm going to try to um, align this to match the MapForge grid. I generally like to align the upper left corner. And well the scale is already set, but if it weren't See, it lets you tweak things, the, the height and the width, independently. So once you've got a good match, you're ready to start recreating your map. Uh, there are also controls for rotation. Uh, if this were like a scan of, of a hand-drawn map, maybe it's not perfectly aligned on the scanner and you want to straighten it out, so you can rotate it and one degree increments or with the shift key in 0 0.01 degree increments so you can get a, a very precise alignment. In any case there's no need to be pixel perfect about it if you don't want to because it's just a rough guide. You can also set the opacity of the background image to whatever you want. Uh, maybe you want just a very light reference that you can follow along with. Uh, for this demo I'm going to set it to something stronger. So now you're ready to start recreating the map. So here you can see I've recreated part of this dungeon and just basically to show you how this button works that you can hide everything in case you wanted to, to make any tweaks 
it can be hard to to align things perfectly when it's half covered up by other elements this button is not working yet the maintain aspect ratio um, hope to get that done soon in relation to this f new feature when you go to export your map there's now an option that you can choose to include the background image or not depending on what it is if it's just like a black star field maybe you want to include it because you placed planets and whatever on top of it and it's just an intrinsic part of the map now uh, in this case uh, I would not include it because that's just a rough draft the last feature I wanted to show you today uh, is especially useful when working with David Baumgart's artwork from uh, the current Kickstarter uh, normally when you're mapping with this artwork you want to be working from top to bottom due to the way the artwork uh, juts out um, vertically from from the hex it's on for example with the mountains they cover up the other hexes that were behind it and what happens if if you don't work from top to bottom is this that's not right at all um, you'd have to go back in there and use the layer, this, you know, change the stacking order, move this to the top, and move this to the top, and so on. And once you've got a, a big map going, you could be doing this for hundreds of hexes. And it doesn't matter if you're working in, in MapForge or Photoshop or GIMP or any image editor. There's, there's no easy way around it except to map from top to bottom. Uh, but the feature I've added lets you get around that. Let me uh, show you a quick example. I'm going to lay down some uh, star fields to be like the night sky here. And uh, another nice bit of art is this. Obviously, I'm not mapping in the proper order, so these aren't showing up the way they should. But anyway, here's the new feature. If you go to Options and select Auto Sort Tiles, it shifts everything around so that it's all laid out from top to bottom. So these underground frames show up properly. The sky shows up properly behind the terrain. Uh, it's a real time saver. I think you're going to enjoy working with that. Uh, I'm not setting it to auto sort every single time you stamp something down because that would get uh, that that could have performance issues. But anytime you need it sorted, just go and select that command. And I will finish off by previewing some other assets from this collection, which I've finished porting. Uh, this is the let me zoom in a bit. I'll, I'll just peruse this very quickly. You can see there are, there are transitions, different levels of snow on the different tiles, different variations of each terrain. Some are meant to be randomized, some are not. And it's just beautiful artwork. So I now have three of the six sets ported to MapForge format, so that's about half the content. And I'll give you a slightly better preview of, of this artwork from the locations set. just incredible artwork. I think you're going to be happy to own this collection if you get it.